Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ brought to you by Zevo here. Taking a look at the odds to win the college football playoff because no more weekends without college football. We are at week zero. Next week will be week one there. Alabama is the heavy favorite, followed by Ohio State, then Georgia, and Clemson. We're going to get picks from our guys, see who they think is going to go to the college football playoff. Let's welcome back in our quarterbacks, Danny Cannell and Brady Quinn here. So last season, we had Alabama, Cincinnati, Michigan, and Georgia. Just mm -hmm. a little refresh. Mm -hmm. Brady, you can go first. Who do you got? Uh, I've got Alabama, Ohio State, Oklahoma. <laughs> I, don't see them, I don't see them losing to anyone really along the course of their schedule, uh, or at least winning the Big 12, so one loss champion at worst. Uh, and then I've got Michigan. And I know this has become a trendy thing now, Danny. You kind of talked about it off the top, but I think there's a potential chance you've got a couple of teams you're looking at for that fourth spot, both of which who have lost to Ohio State. And one would be Michigan, the other one could be Notre Dame. And I'm saying Notre Dame because I do think there's a chance that they could potentially, if they lose to Ohio State and Columbus week one, if they run the table, now you've got a scenario where if Michigan runs the table until they play the Buckeyes, you get two one-loss teams. And both of them are sitting there saying, hey, we'd love to be part of the party. And I don't know if we're gonna have a recency bias in the sense of, the committee's not going to win Michigan because we just saw them last year. If that's actually going to bode well for them because we're saying, hey, we saw this team a year ago. We know they're ready for this. We know they're prepared for this. Let's bring them back and we can have them square off versus Alabama in, in the first game of the playoff and then see what happens if they can make it to the championship. But that or potentially Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame is capable of going 11-1 this year, um, you know, depending on how their schedule works out versus Clemson versus USC later on. But they could be another team that's in this conversation. Either way. The it's Irish. No, We're going with the it's, Irish? It's, no, it's interesting how Ohio State could play a huge role in who that fourth team ends up being. Because I do think Ohio State's probably going to run the table. Yeah, we've seen it happen before too, Brady, with teams you know that lose early in the season. As long as they're competitive, they could be right in the conversation. Notre Dame, they go into the shoe and they play Ohio State tough, physical, which I think they will. Uh, that could actually bode well for them in the long run. So I like your picks. And I think there's a greater chance you see two Big Ten teams than two SEC teams. All right, for my four, kind of similar, except I got a little bit of a different thing. So you have Oklahoma back in the playoffs. I've got Clemson back in the playoffs. I've got the Big 12 missing out. I just don't know if there's a team in there, Oklahoma, with a little bit of that learning curve coming back. I think there's a lot of good teams that could potentially, uh, potentially cannibalize each other, knock each other out. I think you might see a, a two-loss Big 12 champ uh, or a one-loss Big 12 champ. And without a huge odd uh, conference game, I wonder if it hurts their resume. So I have Bama. I have Ohio State winning the Big 10. I have Clemson from the ACC. And then the new player to the party. We saw Michigan and Cincinnati. I've got Utah pulling it all together. I thought that was a massive game last year for them in the Rose Bowl, even though they lost it, showing they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe offensively and they need to get better defensively, but going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a shootout-style game in the Rose Bowl, I thought they did a lot for the program, and I'm a believer in Cam Rising and Kyle Whittingham uh, as the head coach. So I'm going to say Utah gets the Pac-12 back in the playoff. First time in a while we've seen that. They okay. got to gotta win that week one matchup, though, versus Florida. I mean, yeah. one of the things we've seen in the Pac-12 as the season goes on, a lot of cannibalism. You know, they started kind of beating each other up. Next thing you know, they're already playing themselves out of it. I think Utah, USC, Oregon, three teams that all could very well win the Pac-12 this year. And with that non-conference game week one, who knows what happens in Gainesville, that could be end up being the, the dagger that ultimately keeps them from getting in, especially if they end up dropping another game in the Pac-12 but still winning the conference. That would be one you'd have to sit there and look at and say, here we go again with the Pac-12. But uh, very capable. I mean, look, uh, you pointed out, Danny, I mean, the rushing attack, Cam Rising, the way he's been involved, too, in the offense, kind of giving them a lift at the quarterback position. They're very capable, I think, of winning their conference and having a shot of playing for it. It just comes down to how they compare and really how the committee looks at the Pac-12 compared to everyone else, uh, the Big 12, whoever else is in, in consideration for it. Right now, the SEC and the Big 10 look by far and away the best two conferences in college football. Utah favored by two and a half in that game against Florida on the road. On the road. On the road, which is it's an interesting number. Okay, let's go with your pick to win the entire thing, the national championship here. Danny, I want to start with you because it's a little interesting. When you were talking about Ohio State, you said, look, they remind me of that magical LSU team and that magical season there. You're not going with the Buckeyes, though. Why not? Uh, man, it's hard. So, Bama, again. They're the total package. They have the best quarterbacks. Good as C.J. Stroud is, we've already seen an entire season with the Heisman Trophy, Bryce Young, what he's capable of. So you've got the best quarterback in the country. You have the best defensive player in the country in Will Anderson Jr. And you've got the best coach of this generation. 
and you've got them motivated in a year that they didn't win the national championship, this is Bama's year, and I think it's Bama's world, and everybody else is just living it. So give me the tide. I'm going to take Ohio State, but I think it's going to take beating Alabama in order to win it, much like they had to beat when they won their last national championship in the college football playoff in the semifinal round. So uh, I'm on the other side of this one. I think this is one of those years where Ohio State gets back on top. C.J. Stroud has one of those years you look at and say, here's the Heisman Trophy, and now we're talking about Ryan Day a little bit different after the way things ended last year. And I think the defensive changes are going to make the difference when you look at how the Buckeyes are going to be able to play. They're still athletic on that side of the football. They just didn't have the right fit as far as a defensive play caller. That's going to be the difference for them this year is Jim Knowles and the improvements they make along the way. And if they can find, whether it's Jack Sawyer or whoever else, that pass rusher off the edge that they're most famous for, I think they're, they're going to reveal themselves this year. So when it comes to Heisman, you mentioned it right there. You think they're going to give it to Cedric Stroud. He is the favorite. Bryce won young at last. Bro, hello. Bryce Young won it last season. He's back, but you think it's going to go to Stroud. Yeah, Bryce Young's going to be there. He'll be up for it. He'll be a finalist again. I think the world that young man. And to be quite honest with you, he probably should win it for a second year. It's just we seldom see the committee ever do that. So, unfortunately, I think it's going to be C.J. Strider ends up winning it. He's got one of the best wide receivers in the country in Jackson Smith and Jigbun, an embarrassment of riches behind that. And then on top of it, a massive offensive line. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find a bigger group of pass protectors than these guys. So, he's got one of the best play calls there in Ryan Day as well. I mean, everything stacks up for him as long as he stays healthy and executes to win this award this season. All right, let's have some fun. We have had way too much chalk, right? So Bryce Young <laughs> is not going to go back to back. C.J. Stroud is going to get votes taken from him from Jackson Smith and Jigba and Travion Henderson, both guys who are going to be in the Heisman conversation as well. Caleb Williams, they're going to be a three-loss team. He's not going to win it. I'm going deep. I'm going long shot. Will Shipley running back out of Clemson. To me, that was the big story out of Clemson last year, and one of the big reasons they were still get, able to get 10 wins while DJ was struggling, they went back to the ground game and they found their guy and former five-star you know, uh, high school player, Will Shipley, who I think is as dynamic as a back that's been out there and been at Clemson in some, in some time. And again, the quarterback issues I do think are a concern. In order to alleviate some of that pressure, they're going to give Will Shipley the rock. The ACC schedule is manageable. He should be able to put up monster stats. Clemson's going to be in the national conversation. We've seen them have Heisman Trophy winners before. 50-1 to one long shot. Give me Will Shipley. I think if I'm looking at a running back, B. John Robbins is the player I'm going to look at. Who has Shipley, better odds If him. Shipley's winning this, just to me, I, I don't see Clemson being part of the playoff with, with how I've predicted this. If, if Shipley wins it, it's, it's going to be stats-based. And I think I don't see Texas being a part of the playoff either, even win the conference for that matter. But you know they're gonna, he's going to put up stats in that offense at, at UT. So there's no doubt in my mind, if we're picking a running back, Bijan Roberts would be the player that I think if you're looking for plus odds, he'd be the guy to throw in that conversation. It is time for your Zevo worry-free pick, people-friendly, bug-deadly. Danny, I'm going to start with you here. We're looking at your favorite college football win total because Mr. Quinn is going with the fighting the Brady easy, Quinn's here. It's the easiest here. pick He's going there with is. the fighting Brady Quinn, so we're going to put him on pause. No. Danny gets to go first. Bad hosting. <laughs> Give me the fighting Dave Dorns out of Raleigh, North Carolina, the NC State Wolfpack. They were one of my favorite plays last year. They've got Tyler Van Dyke is up there. Devin Leary is the most accomplished ACC quarterback. He's back, made great decisions. They've got a veteran-laden team. I think Dave Dorn is underappreciated. Their schedule is very manageable. The non-conference includes Texas Tech, but they come into Raleigh. I think this NC State team is right back in that conversation. So I love them eight and a half. And I did have a bonus, man. I don't know if Jack got it. I'm going under Texas's win total of eight and a half. I think there's still going to be a massive learning curve while we're buying into this, or a lot of people are buying into the Quinn Ewers hype and the offense. They've already dealt with some injuries, and I'm not so sure it's just going to be smooth sailing from start to finish. So give me the under Texas's eight and a half win. Look at Danny with the horns down. He's just he's not buying into Steve Sarkisian. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can do it here. Um, Look, you can say whatever you want. The reality <laughs> is the floor for Notre Dame is nine wins. I mean, look at their schedule. Look how it plays out. Even if they lost to Ohio State and Columbus, and then you're looking at Clemson and you're looking at USC and they drop those two games, you're nine and three. They should beat everyone else in their schedule. And there's been this whole talk of all this, you know, they're overrated because of their preseason rankings. Really go back over the past few seasons. How have they done? They've been a double-digit win team. They've improved from where they were at the beginning of the season to the end of the season ranking almost every single year. I'd actually say they're pretty appropriately ranked compared to the rest of college football. So they'll be at least a nine-win team. This is a shoe-in. Place the bet. 
Don't worry. Don't think about it. About it. It's easy money. Bet on Notre Dame hit the over of eight and a half wins. It's actually absurd. It's at eight and a half. If they really want to get tricky, go to nine and a half. But eight and a half, easily over. Danny, do you agree with that with Notre Dame? I do. I like Marcus Freeman a lot. I think the offense will be opened up with Tommy Reese. Um, I'm curious to see how the quarterback play unfolds throughout the course of the season. But I think they're a team that's inherited a pretty good roster. It's a winning culture uh, that Brian Kelly left behind. I would go. I'm I'm with Brady on the over eight and a half there. There you go. Thumbs up for the Irish. I know you wanted me to take Warren's the other side. Down. No, 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 no. We love the Irish. We love Brady. We love you, Danny. You guys, thank you so much uh, getting us ready for the college football season. Speaking of college football, make sure to download and follow the Cover 3 podcast. Latest episode, getting you ready for week zero there, going through the game, some of the biggest storylines there. Also talking about the Quinn Ewers news at Texas being named the starter. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.